Perfect for freelancers, contractors, or anyone needing precise project time tracking, this tutorial is your key to endless billing. Forget all those one-size-fits-all tools, with just a few simple Google Sheets formulas and functions, you'll have a time tracker tailored just for you. This timesheet works smoothly on both computer and phone, it's easy to customize, and while you might be tempted to jump ahead, following each step ensures that you know how to adjust this timesheet perfectly for your needs. So let's get started, open the new Google Sheet, and follow along. With the new Google Sheet open, let's start off by saving it. Right away, we'll go to View, Show, Gridlines to get that professional look, and we'll rename our tab Raw Data. Personally, I like the look of dark mode, so I'm going to Control A to select all, and change the fill color to this color here. In A2, we'll type out that this is a timesheet. Let's change the text color so we can actually see it. Click OK. Control A selects the entire worksheet, and let's change this to Work Sans because it's a much nicer font. For our timesheet, we'll make that bold and increase the size to say 22. Let's center it and resize this. Let's make it 220. And set up our headers. Again, we'll go back to our text color and just select this gray. We have our date, clock in, clock out. Start time, we'll put in here. End. Now, in this case, I end up with this emoji, so I'm just going to copy this over from the internet somewhere. And same with this pause, I end up with this emoji. So again, I'm just going to copy this over from the internet and work time. And at this point, you might be wondering, why am I designing everything before actually doing any of the formulas? Well, I'm not a very visual person. I can't imagine how things look. I just have an end goal, and I try to make everything fit that. So my process is to do the design that I'm imagining first, and then fill in all the bits that I need later on. In this case, the bits I need will be checkboxes. So let's pop in a checkbox here, and here as well. And then we're going to create a list of dates here. Now you can use whatever you want, whether it's a list of dates you have already pre-populated, but I'm going to use the sequence function. And the number of rows, well, let's just go for a whole year. Number of columns, well, there's just one. Let's pick a start date. I don't know, I'm going to pick the 7th of January, 2023, because that's when I started work this year, and we're going up one day at a time. Press enter, and there's all of our dates set as numbers. Let's highlight all of these, and actually I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet. We'll go Format, Number, Custom Number Format. It's already set there, but if yours isn't, it'll be Day, 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 Comma, Day, Day, Month, 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 Apostrophe, Year, Year. Of course, you can put in whatever date format you prefer. I'm just going to go with this so we all know which day we're talking about. 7th of Jan, 8th of Jan, and so on. And now we get to our start time, and instead of us manually putting this time in, we're going to use these checkboxes that we've already created to set the times for us. We'll use equals lambda. Our first variable will just be x. Our second variable, let's call it our start time. Then we'll start with our formula expression. If start, then x, else blank. Double brackets, open a bracket, the first variable will be now, our second variable, b5. Close bracket. Let's just read through that. x is a variable, start is a variable. x is the variable now, and start is the variable b5, this checkbox here. If start, then x. In other words, if this checkbox is true, then return now. Otherwise, return nothing. At the moment, the checkbox is false, so we should return nothing. Let's press tab on that, and we get nothing in return. If we click this, we get the time. Let's open this up a little bit, so we can see the full time. We'll do the exact same thing with the end time. Let's go through it again. Equals lambda. Again, we'll use x as our first variable, and this time end as our second variable. We'll put a comma and enter our expression. If end, then x, then null double brackets, open bracket. Our first variable, x, is going to be now. Our second variable, end, is going to be the end time or the clock out time, so that's C5. So again, just like before, x is the variable now, end is the variable C5. If 
end, that's this one here, C5, if C5 is true, then return now, otherwise return nothing. At the moment, it's blank, so it should return nothing. We get an NA, because I'm terrible at spelling, that should be lambda, and press enter, we get nothing. We'll click C5, and there's our date. Let's center everything, and copy all of this all the way down. Double click that handle. Now these are all true, so let's just highlight all of these, control shift down, and press spacebar to get rid of them. All the times are gone, and everything's happy. Let's uncheck and recheck this clock out button, and we get a time difference of around about 9 seconds. So under work time, let's put in a formula that calculates the difference between these two times. Equals this, take away this, end take away start. Press enter, and we get this number here. Now that number is in number format. Let's go up to format, number, and change that to duration. 9 seconds, just what we see here. 15 seconds to start, 24 seconds to end, 9 seconds total. The break hours, well, you can manually enter that in. Let's say that we have a one hour break. We can pop that in right there. Again, we'll center everything. So now let's minus this one hour from the result. We can't just minus one though. We have to minus one divided by 24 because it's 24 hours in a day. Press enter and there's our final time. Let's just test this out by changing this to something sensible. So let's say we go from midday or 48 minutes past midday until 8.48 and we get a total time of 7 hours and 9 seconds. If we change this to 2, we should get 6 hours and 9 seconds. If we have 0, 8 hours work time. Let's leave it as 1 so that we can continue testing. So that's all there is to it really. Let's just undo this so that we get back to our formula. There it is, the formula in the formula bar. We'll highlight all of this, actually let's get rid of break hours, we'll highlight all of this and double click the handle to get all of these. Now I don't like seeing zeros all the time, so let's go back up to G5 and adjust the formula a bit. If E5 equals blank, then return nothing, otherwise the rest of the formula. Press enter and copy that down. So now if we have something in clock in, that's perfectly fine, nothing shows up here, but as soon as we click clock out, we now get the end time and the work time, the work hours. Now that's how to set up a very basic timesheet, but we can do a lot better. Let's just reformat things, update a few formulas, and add in some conditional formatting to make the spreadsheet a whole lot better. First, let's highlight all of A by clicking on this A at the top, and hold Control shift e to center everything. Second, as we scroll down, we lose our headers, so let's grab this in between the one and the blank, grab that and pull that down until it's just below the date here. We'll do the same by grabbing on this vertical line and bringing that over to the A. So now as we scroll this down, our headers stay exactly where they are. Over here on the right hand side, we don't need all of this blank space, so let's click on I and hold Control, Shift and Right button to select everything to the right, then Control minus to delete all of them. Let's go to row 4, and press Control b to make them all bold. That's starting to look really good, but let's start adding in some conditional formatting to do things like weekends and when things go wrong. So first, let's click on A5. We'll go up to Format, Conditional Formatting. I usually ignore the Apply To range until I finish all of the rest of it, so let's change our format cells if we have a custom formula. Our custom formula will be equals weekday of A5, is 7. In other words, A5 is a Saturday. Now we also want to include Sunday with this as well. So let's make this an OR function, and after the 7 we'll write weekday of A5 equals 1. That would be Sunday. Now let's change the apply to range to A5 to A, and click off that, and we get all of the weekends. The 7th and the 8th are Saturdays and Sundays. For the colour, we don't want this green, let's change that to a very dark black, very similar to what we've got here. So first the fill colour, let's change it to the same black, and then we'll go back in and click on custom. We'll make it very similar, but just slightly off. 
1e, e, 1e, e, 1e, that should be perfectly fine. This slightly grayed out, let's make it a little bit more obvious. Just pushing that up just a little bit. That's a lot better. Now I actually want this to span all the way across, all the way to column H. So we need to change our apply to range to A5 to H. But when we click off this, something strange happens. What we need to do is down here in the formula, let's put a dollar sign in front of the A and in front of this A as well. Now we get the weekends all colored in all the way across the row. As we scroll down, this happens all the way down. Now at the moment, it is March 15th, 2024. I've got 2023 here. Let's just change that to 2024 to get the right year. I'm still a year behind. And press enter. That looks a lot better with the right dates in there. But as we scroll down, I don't want to see too many bits of information past the current date. Today is Friday the 15th of March, so I don't really want to see all of these down here. So back in our conditional format, we'll click on add another rule. We'll get rid of this conditional format and we'll say equals A5, again with that dollar sign there, is greater than today. If we scroll down, you can see all this gray down here. Let's change the fill color to our original black and the text color to the original black as well. That gets rid of all of the weekdays. We'll click on done and then grab this and push it up to the top. That gets rid of all of these. So now when we come here, we can focus on just the row that we need. That's today's row. At the same time, if we accidentally click one of these checkboxes, it comes up with a warning saying, hey, there's a checkbox in here. Do you want to toggle it? And we can say, no, we don't want to do that. But we can still use any of these to sign in and out. The last conditional format that I want to do is for an error check. So here on Sunday, the 7th of January, we have in this section here, the 15th of March. I want to check if these two dates are the same. If they are, perfectly good. If they're not, then that means we've clicked on one of the wrong dates and we need to recheck our information. So let's click on one of these again and we'll click on add another rule. We'll keep this as custom formula is and in, in the box we'll write equals days and we'll check the days between D5 and A5. D5 comma A5. If that is equal to zero, that's perfectly fine. So let's change that to not equal to zero. If that happens, then let's make it red so it's really obvious that these two things are different. This does not match this. Right now that's a lot of red, so let's click on done and just move this up to make it even more red. We'll click back in and add in another expression using the AND function. So we'll start with AND and open a bracket. At the end we'll put a comma. Our second expression will be D5 is not blank. Close a bracket. And that's just checking if there's any date written in this column. So now it's checking this date against this date. If those are the same, then everything works. If those are different, then we get this red cell. If I change this from the 15th of March to the 8th of January, it turns black and everything works. We still do need to check this one here because that still says the 15th of March. I'm going to leave that part up to you to decide if that's something that you want because some people work over the midnight barrier and they wouldn't want this conditional formatting because they'd have red all over their spreadsheet. If we have, for example, the 8th of January here and the 9th of January here working past midnight, then maybe you wouldn't want to implement that feature. In other timesheet tutorials, you might also see that crossing the midnight barrier is a bit of a problem. However, for this spreadsheet, that's not a problem at all. Let's check it out. In E6, let's say that we crossed the midnight barrier. So we're no longer on the 8th of January. We're now on the 9th of January. And let's say that we finish at 3 a.m. Over here in the work time, we've worked six hours. Now that works perfectly well without any adjustments because we've included not just the time, but also the date in our formula. 
I'm going to go ahead and input some real data from the past few months. And this is pretty much how many hours I work as a spreadsheet nerd, making spreadsheets, fixing spreadsheets, doing spreadsheet audits, making these videos, and of course, doing consults. Now, if you want a spreadsheet audit for your business or a consult to see what is possible, what we could do with your spreadsheets or go further, then make sure you check out the description down below where you can book in some time with me to check out what is possible with your spreadsheet. Now, what we've got here so far is pretty great, but there's a few more things I want to implement. First thing, let's just split everything up with some borders. We'll select all of our data with control A, and just hold shift and press down to not include the headers. We'll click on the borders up the top and we first need to change our color. Let's go to this color up here. We haven't really used it much and we'll click on inside borders. It might be hard to see, but we do have those borders there and it just makes things a little bit more professional. We'll zoom back out and even though it's hard to see, it is there just at a glance. Let's bring column H in. And if you wanted to, we could add in an extra column to the right and put in your pay. Now your pay might be split up into several sections. You might have overtime pay, you might have regular pay. So let's say we have overtime. Add a couple more columns to the right. We'll have regular pay and then overtime pay. One more column to give us total. First, we need to decide how much is overtime. Well, let's say that overtime is anything over eight hours. So up the top, we'll put the number eight. We can use this as a reference cell in our formula. We'll just increase the number of hours here so that we get over that eight hours. Eight hours, 36. So in here, we should end up with 36 minutes. Equals this, take away this divided by 24. There's our 36 minutes. If instead of 5.59, we worked until 6.59, we end up with one hour, 36 minutes. Back in our formula, we'll click on I1 and press F4. On Mac, I think it's function and F4 to get those dollar signs. Press enter and now double click this handle. And we have a bit of a problem. We only want to apply this formula if the number of hours here is over this number. So at the beginning, let's say if hour G6 is greater than I1, then return the formula we just created. Again, let's click on I1 and press F4 or function F4 if you're on Mac and press enter. We'll drag that down and we get all these falses. Back in our formula, we'll just put a comma after the 24. Again, drag that down and it's all blank. Perfect. If this goes over eight hours, then we end up with some overtime. Let's copy this all the way down. And now let's check through here. All of these are under eight hours, but let's change this to see what happens. There's our overtime. Easy. Let's now calculate the regular pay. Let's put in here under the overtime hours. Let's say we get $23 per hour. I have pounds up here as our currency. So let's go file settings and change this to your own locality. Now I'm in New Zealand, but New Zealand doesn't exist in Google Sheets. So let's just use Australia. Save and reload and change this to dollars. Now for our regular pay, that's anything up to eight hours. So let's write equals if hour G6 is greater than eight, exactly as what we had before, then eight times I2. We'll press F4 on that and put a comma G6 times I2. Press F4. And we'll see in a moment why that's not quite right, but we'll go with this for now. Press enter and we get this number here. Now that should be in dollars. So let's put this as dollars and we get $184 as regular pay. We'll copy this down and see where things go wrong. Again, $184 because we've gone over the eight hour barrier. So we're only using eight hours. We'll get the remainder in overtime pay. But in I8, we only ended up with $5.03. And the reason is because of this number here. This is using this number as a time, but we need to turn it into a decimal time. So all we need to do is multiply this by 24. Press enter and there's our full amount. Copy this down and that's how much we get paid for these three days. For our overtime pay, for us, it's usually 1.5 times. So in our overtime pay, we use equals this number Remember, we have to change it to decimal time by times in by 24. 
times the pay times the multiplier. Let's lock in K2 using F4 and I2. Press enter. Again, we get this duration format. So let's copy this format using control C over to here using control alt V. And we get $55.42 in overtime pay. We'll copy that down and with these all should be zero. Finally, our total pay is just this plus this. Press enter, control alt V to give us that format and then copy that down. We can now copy this all the way down to give us all our pay. Let's copy this all the way down past the current date because when tomorrow comes around and it's the 16th of March, this will say 16th of March and we'll get access to all of these checkboxes. So let's copy this all the way down. Go back up the top and so far we're doing pretty good. If we go over to column A and hold control and down, that gets us to row 369. Anything after that, we don't really care about because we're only using a year's worth of information. So let's click on 370, hold control, shift and down, and then control minus to delete all of those rows. Much cleaner. Let's add in some borders to all of this, just like we did before. That's the wrong color and size. Let's try that again. Much nicer. Now, every time we open up the spreadsheet, we'll have to scroll down and go to the right date. That's a little bit of a pain, so let's make things a little bit easier. Up the top under Timesheet, let's put a hyperlink that we could just click and it goes to the right place. Equals hyperlink. It's going to be this URL and the range equals B. In this case, let's just put a placeholder as 73. Close quotation marks, comma, and then whatever text you want. Go to current date. Press enter, and we've got a button that goes to the current date. So if I click this and then this, it takes us right here. We want this to be dynamic. So instead of just row 73 every time, we want to go to the right date. Let's get rid of the 73. That was just a placeholder. And after the double quotation marks, we'll use an ampersand match. We're looking for today's date. And where, where are we looking? Well, we're going to look in A5 to A, this range here, A5 to A. We want an exact match. And let's add to that four rows because we have four rows here at the beginning. Press enter, scroll back up. And we'll go to the current date right there. If we were to come back tomorrow and click on this, it would take us to the correct date. We start work by clocking in. It records the time, and then when it's time to end, we'll clock out. How many hours of break did we have? Let's say one hour, and we get a few errors here because we've now gone into negative time. I'll just adjust this slightly. So let's say that I started a few hours ago. We get our work time, overtime, and the expected pay. So when it comes to using this for real, all you need to do is interact with these two checkboxes. And that makes things really easy when it comes to using this on your phone. It's just a click of a button. So here on my cell phone, I can go over to Google Sheets and open up this timesheet. We can click on go to current date and it takes us right to the bottom. You can see me there active in the uh, spreadsheet on screen. But really all I need to do is click this checkbox and it records the time. We wait a few hours until we're finished, click this checkbox, and again, it records the time. We can put in our break here. I'm gonna change that to zero so that we don't get any errors over here. And there's all our pay already calculated for us. Really simple. If we zoom out, we can see a much bigger view. And there you've got a timesheet, but of course, I always like to take things a little bit further. Let's set up some kind of analysis. Now there's a few ways you can do this. At the end of each week, you can just add in the total pay. So let's say our week ends on the Sunday. Let's say equals the sum of the last week's pay. This week we get $982, and then we can copy this down to all of the Sundays. From there, we'd have to continue adding things in at the bottom, so it's not the method that I like to do. Instead, let's go ahead and duplicate this, and let's delete all of this information. We'll call this breakdown or analysis or whatever you want to call it. Delete all of this stuff up the top. 
then go back to our raw data and hold Control A to select everything, but we really only want from the headers all the way down to the bottom. We'll click on Insert, Pivot Table, Existing Sheet, and we'll put it into Breakdown A4. Click OK, click Create. Now we did just see over here, we've got some formulas. Let's go ahead and delete that and come back to our pivot table. There's our edit range button. So we'll click that. And let's start adding information into this pivot table. Get rid of this suggested information and we'll do everything from scratch. First, we'll take the date and pop that into our rows. Then we'll take the work time, pop that into our values, change this to sum. We can also do that with our pay. If you want that split up into regular pay and overtime pay, you can. Again, changing those to sum. And we don't need this conditional format. So let's go up to format, conditional formatting, and delete all of these. And add in our total pay after our overtime. The formatting does not look good at all. So let's just quickly update that. All of this should be pay. So we'll select all of that and click on the dollar sign at the top. The total pay should be sum. And if we go up the top, we get $184 and $55. Adding those together gives us $239. Control Shift E to center everything. Let's just make everything about the right size. We'll call this work time, regular pay, overtime pay, and total pay. Let's go up the top and click on data, add a slicer. Move this right up the top here and change this from A3 to A4, I think it is. Yes, A4. Under column, let's choose work time and close that sidebar down. Under all, let's deselect blanks. Press OK. And now we only get the dates that have data in this work time column. No weekends, no sick days, and nothing after today's date. We can split this up a little bit nicer by having all of the Januarys together and the Februarys together. We'll right click on this and create pivot data group, and we'll go with year month. There's 2024 January, February, and March. If you want to see a breakdown of that, come over here, grab the date, and put that underneath that first row. We now have the total of January down here, $2,888, and it's broken down by day. If we want, we can click the collapse buttons and just see the totals. Because we added this date column in, our work time has changed to dollars, so let's select all of that and go up to Format, Number, Duration, and we can see in January we worked 121 hours. Now most people in New Zealand get paid either weekly or fortnightly. Now if we expand these groups and right click on this, and go to create pivot data, we can see there is no week option here. We have month, quarter, and month day, but no week. If you wanna see week or fortnightly pay, let's do that over here in column H. We'll just select this and copy it over to column H. Let's go down the bottom to open up the sidebar, and let's just add a separator here to show that we are separated. Don't want any of that. Actually, I'll hold control and backslash to get rid of all of the, the formatting. And we'll delete this. Let's scroll across to ignore most of that beginning stuff. And again, update all of our formatting. Work time should be a duration. And all of these should be money. Now this little workaround to see weekly or fortnightly payments, we'll click on column H, go to format, number, number. Let's click on H5 and right click. Create pivot group rule. Our interval size will be size seven if you want weekly data, size 14 if you want fortnightly data. Click on OK. Open that up. And now we get all of the information from the 6th of Jan to the 12th of Jan, one full week. So for that first week of January, we got $900. If your week starts on a Monday and goes through until Sunday, then we need to do a little bit more work. Let's go back to raw data and figure out what this date is as a number. We'll go to format, number, number, 45299. Remember that number. 
45299. Control Z to undo that. And then back here, right click, edit pivot group rule, 45299 as our minimum value. Click OK. And now we're going from Monday through to Sunday. Our pay hasn't changed because technically we didn't work any weekends, so all of this looks exactly the same, but it has been updated for the extra information. Let's close the pivot table editor, delete all of these rows, control shift to the right, and then control minus to delete. And we'll click on this and pull that in. And just like that, we've got monthly analysis and weekly analysis. Now for best practice in this sheet here in raw data, it's best that you don't do any sorting because it may mess up these formulas. It's important that once you've created this, you go up to the top, you click on this refresh button, and then you come back tomorrow, and then all of these numbers should be set. If you don't do the refresh and create this timesheet ahead of time, giving you a day's notice at least, then when you come back in here, the information might not be cached and it might not save properly. So make sure you do those things. If you do want to do any sort of sorting within the raw data sheet, make sure you check this video up here to see how you can do that with scripts. Otherwise, if you've got questions and you want to expand your business and learn how to analyze your information with Google Sheets, make sure you check out the description below. And don't forget, you can check out this video here.